Hello and welcome to another tip on Maximo. I'm your host, Chris Winston from Project Tech here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today, we'll review an example of a report that can be run from the Start Center and built as a query-based report or QBR. We'll do this while using the options for parameters as well as design features such as totals fields and download. For reference, included here are links to two previous videos on query-based reporting whose content will be leveraged here, but not repeated. As always, if you have additional topics or requests, please send them to media at projectech.com. Three key areas will be combined in this presentation. First, QBR is being shown from the Start Center perspective. As an example of the type of query-based report you would want to run from the Start Center. Keeping in mind, of course, you can run this from the Run Reports action in the Maximal application the report was built in. Second, to show the combination of using an embedded query, which is created when you build a report the first time, along with runtime parameters that you would set up in Report Administration. Uh, these runtime parameters allow you variability at runtime for the end user. Uh, and third, Leveraging the totals fields that accumulate values throughout the application. These, of course, are delivered with Maximo out of the box, uh, such as those for work orders, hours, and dollars, uh, purchase orders for line or order costs, and inventory for issuances uh, year to date, year ago, two years ago, and so on. So, what's our roadmap? How do we get there? Start out with the design and run of the primary query. Reviewing of the result set to make sure it is what you want. Keeping in mind, you'll probably get more records in this run uh, because you're going to be including parameters that will limit those numbers of records. Uh, second, we want to then go ahead and create the queries based report. In our case, we have actually included uh, the query and embedded it within the report. Third, we want to navigate to Report Administration and add the parameters. For easy reference, included here are a few tips for setting up parameters, and we'll look a little bit more at those when we get into the report in Report Administration. Uh, let's take a look at the Report Administration screen and essentially how the report will look uh, when set up. Now remember, this example will already have an embedded query to incorporate closed and completed work orders. So our parameters don't really need to incorporate status as an example. However, we do incorporate two date ranges, uh, report date, so we need a parameter for the earliest report date and a parameter for the latest report date because we also need to make sure that we identify an operator greater than or equal to or less than or equal to depending on the parameter and in cases of ranges we need to make sure that we uh, submit the earliest and latest uh, for that field in our case we're doing report date as well as actual finish date noting no fields are required but you can specify and, and require fields and also uh, there are lookups available to make it simpler for the end user uh, to insert their data last thing of course site ID which will allow you to then add a site or multiple sites uh, in the parameters again at runtime. As for what it looks like at runtime, essentially we'll pull up from the start center, we'll take a look and identify our report, uh, and from there when we go to run a report, our parameters will display. We'll be able to enter them again no required parameters should they be required you know you'll see the amber asks just as you would the application uh, you have the lookup in this case the calendar icon and then the select value for the site id knowing the box is a little wider for site id to allow for multiple site entry and of course if you want you can always just type the information in and once the criteria is actually entered into the report you can go ahead and submit it to run, get our output generated, and a couple things of note. Uh, normally for all reports you get number of records at the end on the last page. Uh, in this case because we have essentially two 
query is involved, our saved where clause, that is the query that is embedded in the report, will be identified separately from the dynamic where clause that is created based on the parameters that you enter. Now from here, what we want to do is export the data as opposed to the report. Now the significance here, as it would show, is in our case, we've uh, done a little grouping in the report, we've grouped by site ID. So that gives us a header every time there's a change in site. And as a consequence, and you, if, if you export a report, you'll get that header involved. If you export it as data, uh, it'll look a little bit different. Uh, the nice part about this is we get our column selection dialog next, where we can choose what columns we want to select, general columns to remove, to ignore, parameter where clause, and then the total number of records. Uh, you can keep that if you want, but small matter of time before you start to drop it. And then last thing, of course, is our output. So as you can see here, our embedded queries work for us by grabbing and completing and closed work. Our site ID has come out to the right, so even though it is a group field in the actual report, because it is export of data, it just comes out as another column, which we can filter on, of course, uh, as needed within Excel. So let's take a look at that inside of Maximo. And we'll start with report administration. Let's just take a look at the report itself. Uh, let's see how we should use to get it. And whoops, let's do that over here. There we go. So we've got our report. We'll take a look at it in report administration. And we can see here again our parameters. Uh, our lookups and of course there are, are many lookups available just again to make it easier for the user and significantly difference here site ID has the multi lookup enabled so that's checked off allowing the end user to put in more than one site ID back to our start center to run the report and we'll go ahead and we'll pick a little more time frame Select a few sites, speaking Bedford, let's see, Laredo, McLean, and Texas. Everything's entered. Go ahead and submit it. And we'll see with our output as we can look through in the groupings that we'll be able to see on the individual pages. We'll get our group header, uh, of course, and we'll jump to the last page. We've group headers changed from Bedford to Texas. I think around page 10, yeah. So here we've got the Laredo site. So you'll see there will be multiples within the report, which works fine and great for the printed report. But from a data standpoint, the exporting of data actually works a little bit better to utilize it in Excel. So we've got 645 records. We'll keep that in mind. We'll look at that in a moment. And we'll go ahead and let's export our data. And of course, we're going to ignore our total record count and our where clause and open up in Excel and now we've got our data displayed and from here we can see all of our columns came in rather nicely and let's make this fit a little better so as is typical because our dates contain time they're very wide in the field our site ID came over as a separate column. And the one thing you'll note in dealing with all actual records, or not all, most actual records, including all that include hours, generally what you want to do, and you can automate this with a macro if you like. Uh, let's see. In dealing with times, uh, times are interpreted once and loaded a sheet as time as opposed to durations of hours and minutes. And as a consequence, we need to, if we're going to do this with any math, we'll need to utilize a formula to convert uh, the data. So, first thing we want to do is make sure Excel knows this is a number. 
and we'll utilize our formula to make that conversion. I'll just drag it through all the records. And of course the big difference is when you total the fields of hours without the conversion, you get a well, <laughs> you get the wrong answer. Uh, when you total it with the conversion, you get something that's a lot more reasonable. Uh, makes sense with the, particularly in this case, the number of records. And in our case, we have 646 records in the sheet. Uh, a line for the header row, that is 645 records, which matches the total at the end of the report. So again, uh, should you have other questions or topics, please make sure to drop us an email at media at Thank you.